How's everyone going? How's everyone going? Like how's on. everyone going? Got too many tabs open. I couldn't find the right tab. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, I see Osiris, John, Stephen, JB, Dark Ghost, Kane. How y'all doing? Still a little bit of coughing, but things mostly been getting better. Um, so I was debating. I haven't put anything on the ship yet. I want. I wanted to wait. Um, and I was taking a look through what I had on this character already, and I I have a few different options. So this is where I'll ask for some input from from you guys watching. Do you want me to do a dual beam bank setup or beam array? That that is like dual beam bank is always going to win out for maximum DPS potential. But I know that there's a lot of people that like beam arrays, so I'll uh, give you guys a minute because if I go beam arrays, I have a disruptor set. If I go dual beam banks, I have a phaser set. Alan, how's it going? Lord Bane, pretty good. There's been a bit of coughing today. Uh, but overall, you know, it's beach day is getting better, but still the, the coughing. The one vote for dual beam banks. So if, if I do phasers, it's got to be dual beam banks because on this character, I do not have a full set of phasers for be for a beam array setup. But I have a full set of phasers for a dual beam bank setup. So just dual beams, okay. So with dual beam banks, that does make things a little bit easier. Um, phasers, I mean, everyone likes phasers, right? The phasers are very much one of the most popular uh, weapon types out there right now. So standard disclaimer, as with anything, this is my approach to building a, or how I would build out a beam overload ship. I think, you know, it's a fairly good way, but, you know, there's always the chance that uh, maybe statistically I don't have the right console on mathematically, you know, the best one that you could slot, but that this is what I would do. Um, I could, if, if I had the gear on this character, I could do dual beam banks with disruptors, but I do not have a dual beam bank disruptor set up on this character. So that's why the, the choice was, uh, disruptor beam arrays or phaser dual beam banks. But realistically, uh, if you wanted to transfer the build that I'm doing here today with phasers over to disruptors, Plasma, Polaron, whatever the hell you want. All you have to do is swap the weapons out and your TAC consoles, you know. Transferring between one damage type to the other, uh, people generally overthink it when it's just a matter of swapping your weapons out, your TAC consoles, and maybe a set piece. You know, most of the builds going to remain the same. Yeah, the fleet core is really good. Okay, so for the phasers, I have some sensor linked uh, dual beam banks then that I'll be using. So I also have the wide angle dual beam bank from the uh, discovery reputation. Now I will not be using the three piece. I will only be using the two piece. I will not be using a torpedo on this build. Uh, if you want to put a torp on your build, that's fine. But generally, uh, when you're doing a, an energy weapon based build, the moment you put a torpedo on, you are almost always 
uh, throwing some DPS potential out the window. So I'm going to go with a fleet colony core. Now I am one or not core deflector fleet colony deflector. Uh, this specifically is one of the intervention ones. Uh, these are used because they give you crit chance and severity that scales up as your HP is higher. So it's up to, I think it's 4% crit chance and 15 severity. Yeah, I'll probably go with the Spire uh, Warp Core. Um, the Terran Phaser, yeah, the Terran Phaser is a good, if you have the Terran Beam, you can do that. Um, but being I am going to have Cannon Scatter Volley on here, with the scat with the beam overload builds, you can get a bit more damage out of having uh dual heavy cannon on, but that's just going to be dependent on your buying style. Let me see if I have another phaser dual beam bank on here or in my bank that I can grab. Let me go take a look quick, see if I have just another phaser dual beam bank that I can bring over. The the Terran or the Terran beam array, uh, you can do that with a dual beam bank setup. Um, and it really it's gonna depend on your piloting. Um, if you're a good pilot, you can keep yourself straight on the target, then having the Terran dual heavy cannon on is going to probably offer the most potential because you're still going to have a cannon scatter volley on the build to trigger preferential targeting, uh, which is going to give a large boost to your beam overload. And the Terran cannon just does a lot. Uh, generally, when we do a dual beam bank build, if the Terran beam array is slotted, uh, the only way that that does more damage than a dual beam bank is if your piloting is bad. So it's not generally done. Sam, how's it going? So, phaser. I mean, I have some dual beam banks. I'm just, tell you what, I'll just do the, the Terran dual heavy cannon just to demonstrate that. I mean, it's, it's not, it, it's just most people, the, the way most people fly, they're going to get more out of having the Terran beam on than the Terran dual heavy can. So I'm going to do the Terran. Do I have the phaser? Okay. Do I have enough to grab the phaser dual heavy cannon? Yes, I do. So if you're looking to maximize your damage potential with beam overload, uh, dual beam banks are going to do better, but it's the issue with dual beam banks is you have to be in a piloting style where you are constantly facing your opponent like the front of your ship needs to be facing the target you're trying to hit that's why a lot of people go for beam rays instead because beam rays provide a larger firing arc they don't do as much damage but they make it easier to stay on target so while i have that weapon uh building let me some of this other gear put on. I'm going to go with the competitive reputation prevailing innervated impulse engines. Uh, whenever you hit a firing mode, so things like beam overload, torp spread, high yield, cannon scatter volley, things like that, it's giving you basically an evasive maneuvers for five seconds. So it's a very large speed boost and uh, generally you know, speed, being able to get to the next position faster is going to equate to more damage potential. Of 
for the warp core, um, you know, there's a couple different ways you can go here. The the fleet spire core, I I think is the one that most people are going to immediately jump for. Uh, the fleet spire core is a very good option. One of these that gives you the power transfer, the minus weapon power cost. Um, those are really good. If you're looking for survivability, you might consider the disco two piece with the shield. But if you're looking for just the raw damage potential, the the fleet spire core or there's a crafted one you can get the deuterium stabilized warp core. Uh, either of those are going to work fine. Now, the deuterium stabilized warp core does not offer as much. Um, like you're, you're losing out on the EPS aspect, the power transfer rate, but it does give you a larger weapon power cost reduction. And that's something that you can craft, buy on the exchange, move it between characters in your account bank. Uh, but the, the Fleet Spire core, I think, is just a very affordable option. And you should be able to pick that up on each character if you're doing enough uh, contributions to your fleet. Yeah, you can do the Iconian Warp Core to shut or to, to keep OSS from shutting your weapons down. But um, I just for for me, the the OSS, you know, that that's a bit of a gamble with it. You can counter that with a device. Um, probably I've seen some people they'll still run like red matter capacitor. Now, red matter is cool. It's not something that I run on a regular basis, but that is something one of the multiple options you have to counter OSS. Uh, JB, I think, I, I don't know for sure, but Agony would probably hit a little bit harder. Just, just a guess. Yeah, the Ico set the, is something that they nerfed quite heavily. So for the shield, I'm going to go with the Discovery Reputation Tilly Shield. Uh, the reason for this is it has a proc on it, or it's not really proc, it's just always there. And it scales up based on your shield power. And every time you shoot a target that has shields, you will do more damage to the enemy shields based on your shield power. So it's just a really good shield. It's even with you having your shield power set very low, it's still going to give you a pretty uh, substantial boost. Okay, so that Terran dual heavy cannon is done building, so I'm going to be running that here. Let me get that upgraded though quick. The, you know, the fun part. I was 32% till that finally went. That was, I don't know how many uh, upgrades that was, but that was a lot. So all of my weapons, I'm going to be specking to uh, crit D damage as the epic mod. And for the other mods, any mix of crit D and damage is fine. If you're a min-max player, you're probably going to want to spec out all a damage, but um, the, the crit D mod is perfectly uh, fine for, for most players. Okay, so that is upgraded. So for the aft weapons, I have a sensor linked Omni. So this is my non set Omni. For the set Omni that I'm going to run, being I am using Phaser, I am going to go with the Trilithium Omni. Uh, this is from the Beyond the Nexus story mission, I believe. And for the third aft weapon, a lot of people like the, the kinetic cutting beam alongside the assimilated module from the Borg reputation, the Omega rep. 
Uh, but I'm going to go and actually use a turret in this third weapon slot instead, and I'm going to use the phaser turret from the Gamma Reputation. This has a proc on it uh, that will always trigger against foes that are moving slower than you, and when it hits them, it's going to be debuffing them minus 10 damage resistance rating, so it's, it's a pretty solid turret. Uh, let me catch up on chat here. Revolutionary Core, I don't have X. Unfortunately, I, I missed that event. Um, Steven, thank you. Sam, thank you. Yeah, that, that was a lot of upgrades. I know, Alan, and just, just think this... This is my uh, my newer DPS character. Terrible. Um, yeah, discovery for the shield and with this build, also the uh, the wide angle dual beam bank. This is going to be used alongside the Lorca console. Um, I know a lot of people would prefer the quant, like you know, the dark matter quantum torp, but unless I'm doing a full on torp build or a very specific build where I'm utilizing like concentrate firepower, I don't like having a torpedo on the build. It generally, in, in my experience, in most cases, for like a beam overload build, cannon scatter volley, uh, in most of those cases, having a torp on the build is just lowering your damage output. And you're, you're just taking the trade off of, you wanna have that immersive, you wanna see the, the torps firing from your ship, and you're going to be trading DPS to have that visual uh, immersion for your build. Uh, do I think pilot teleport is a viable means to maintain DPS in an ISC left, right run? Um, I don't know. I think investing in any teleport abilities, uh, generally you're taking something away on your build to do that. Um, the ultimate set, I think, applies more at a high level. And uh, I, I think the ultimate set, the, the Omni, Console, and Torpedo are really good. But I think they're applying to more of a high level environment. Uh, and with this specific build that I'm showing today, I want this to be something that uh, anyone can go out and pick up. The issue with ultimate is ultimate's only really good in short duration content. And unless you know that you and the team you're playing with are going to be able to have content done at that pace, you're not going to get the full benefits of the ultimate set. I mean, Steven, if you want to run the dark matter or another torp, it's fine. Uh, it's just, uh, for, for me, it's not preferred. Yeah, the, the ultimate, or not the ultimate, the assimilated two piece, the cutting beam and the assimilated module, those can be nice. Um, and I, I know I get why a lot of people like it, but for, for me, I would generally prefer to have the turret. But you can definitely, if you want to go the, the cutting beam route, uh, you can grab that quite easily from the Omega reputation, and that is very solid. I, I don't have that on this character, uh, but you can very easily obtain the, the KCB and the, the console. Dasa, how's it going? Okay, so for my devices, the red matters there just because I'm going to be using OSS and this is just a, a backup. Oh crap, I just had a really important subsystem go down. I could just hit red matter to get it back. The temporal negotiator is just if I need a backup for cooldown reductions. It's got a five minute cooldown though, so uh, it's basically only usable once in a run. The Kobayashi Maru Transponder, I call this in. It provides me a variety of boost. 
Then I'm going to run a deuterium surplus. These are unlocked from a mission that I can't remember uh, in the bottom of the, the, what is the beta quadrant. I don't even remember right now. Um, but down by Nukara, south of Drozana, there's a mission you can do. Alhina system. Yeah, skirmish. Once you do that mission, you can craft these. And they're basically like an evasive maneuvers in a can. So they're, they're very good. Yeah, I think it's skirmish. And then for the last device, uh, I'm going to run some energy amplifiers. So you can craft these right in the uh, the crafting window. These, I think it's the, the beam school that has these. So if you go to your R&D window, go to beams. Yep, it's under uh, beams there. You see energy amplifiers. You can craft these in a large quantity and... What these do is they will just provide you with a 20% cat to uh, boost your energy weapons for 10 seconds or 20 seconds if you have the battery unlocking your skill tree. Okay. So for the Universal Console, I almost always just put my uh, Lorca Console there. So I'm going to put that in there. That's going to give me a two piece with the dual beam bank, which is going to give me the. Uh, the crit severity that stacks up in combat. So I think most of you are very familiar with that. Can't tell what ship is it coming through blurry? Is the, the stream blurry or something? It, refresh if it's blurry on your side, just refresh it. For my attack consoles, I'm going to personally run um, exploiters instead of locators because I'm on a Romulan character that has a lot of crit chance. But if you were on a, just a normal fed character, then you might want to run locators instead. But I have enough crit chance that I am going to run the uh, crit severity consoles, the exploiter. Gotcha, Jay. I'm in the D7 Temporal Battle Cruiser. So for my TAC consoles, it's basically the Lorca, which I put up in the Universal slot. Uh, that gives me the crit chance, weapon power, shield pen, lots of good buffs on it. For my TAC consoles, they're all vulnerability exploiters from the Fleet Spire. Uh, if you're on a non-Romulan character, I'd probably run locators instead. I'm just on a uh, a character that is spec to have very high crit chance. I'm going to put the Immolating Phaser Lance on. This is off the Deimos Pilot Destroyer. Uh, this is a very powerful Phaser Lance. It's basically the only Phaser Lance in the game that actually does damage. A uh, very good console, and it's used in conjunction with the Universal Design Starship trait. Okay, so console-wise, I'm also going to run the Agni Redistributor. This is off the Terran Adamant. This console is basically an area of effect recursive shearing. So whatever target I mark this on, uh, all the secondary targets around it are going to receive a ton of damage based on how much damage myself and my team do to the target I marched on. Well, let me catch up here. Osiris, you know, event campaign. Uh, we're going to have that next uh, part of the event campaign here in mid-August, so... This is a ship that you can get from your event campaign reward. Is the A472 console still good with a, with its bonuses? Uh, it's okay. I think it's just generally fallen out of favor, Phil Monk. I mean, it still works as well as it always did. It just, I think in most cases, people just don't want to slot the, the multi-conduit, whatever it is. Uh, I think of the thing. I don't even remember. Yeah, you, you gotcha. 
from a value standpoint, how much better is this ship compared to the legendary D7? The legendary D7, I think, for just general energy weapon, like, or for use, use with a variety of different builds, is going to have more, like, potential. But specifically with beam overload, rapid fire, uh, the single target options, I think the D7 Temporal beats it out, but for area of effect based builds, the legendary one should win out. Uh, this, this ship was not on the exchange last I checked. So my next console is going to be here. Uh, well, I have the Trilithium Omnion, so I'm going to run the console that goes along with that for the two piece. And that gives me some firing cycle haste. So my weapons just actively fire, you know, a little bit faster. Uh, Michael, yeah, the, the Agony Redistributor console is sort of, well, to, to be honest, it's sort of uh, overpowered. If I, if you look at parses that are up on the DPS leaderboards, if I go and look at, say, ISE, I pull the, the top record from over there right now. I look at the damage sources for, for Game Freaks in that run. He had 32 million damage come from the Agni Redistributor on his Torpedo build. Uh, which in that run, which keep in mind, very fast 30 second run, basically, or 40 second. That equated to 803 ADPS out of his uh, 3.2 million, basically. So the Agony Redistributor works uh, very well, even on ships that do not have uh, recursive shearing. Uh, text. That that five percent haste is basically your weapons just straight up. That's a five percent more damage out of your weapons, basically. Now, eventually there are some like not quite diminishing returns, but uh, dim it's I guess pretty much diminishing returns. Uh, once you hit a certain point with haste. Uh, and you can actually hit a point with firing cycle haste where your weapons fire too fast for the server to handle. So you want to be somewhat careful with haste, but a 5% uh, won't be much of an issue. That's more of an issue when you get into the, the hundreds percent of firing cycle haste. Scythia, thank you. Scythia, thank you for the membership. I can't pronounce things at all right now, apparently. Um, do you advise me as a three day trekkie to power level 265 from assignments and get a good T6 ship and go through ship building? Um, so if I understand what you're saying there, you're are you asking if you should power level? I I, I think if you're brand new to the game, it's really good to go through the story mission. Okay, next console, I'm gonna run the bioneural infusion circuits. I just, you know, I like the the crit severity from it. Uh then I'm going to run Seeing I have the gamma turret on, I could run the ordnance accelerator that does have a two piece with the gamma turret. Uh, but that's only going to give me 10% phaser weapon damage and 10% flight turn rate on top of the uh, boost from the ordnance accelerator. So some people may not want to go down this route. Um, I'm not going to for this case, but that is a good option at a more budget level. So I'm going to uh, get some more firing cycle haste on this build. I'm going to put on the uh, temporal trajectory shifter. This is from the Narendra and I can't remember the KDF ship it's from, but there's a couple ships that it's from and 
Um, it just, you mark it on a target and it will provide you with a lot of firing cycle haste. You just have to be careful with where you're targeting it. And it is a toggle, so you can't spam Bart. So I know for some people, you're not going to like it because you can't spam Bart. Well, Kithia, thank you. I'm glad that I've been able to help. Is there one up on the exchange when you, so like I said in the beam overload video, um, be careful when you're looking at the 23rd century ships on the exchange, because sometimes, yeah, you see how there's these, uh, these like undiscovered dreadnought boxes. These are not the correct box, but this 23rd century tier six ship box here is the correct one that has the E7 temporal battle cruiser. More spam bar. 99 Cheops. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit better. Had a little bit of a uh, coughing fit earlier, but yeah. And best. Get, getting better each day. Uh, 1.5 billion is the cheapest on the exchange right now. So haste wise, um, the Domino is also pretty popular. It with a, the issue with a single target build though, is you're not always going to be able to maximize the uptime on Domino. Domino has a 10 second base duration, but it can be extended up to 30 seconds. But you have to get uh, 10 kills during the time period that Domino is up in order to get the max uptime. So builds like Ganon Scatter Volley builds can take advantage of that. Beam Overload has a much harder time doing that. But that can work, so... I am going to put the domino on because I know people really love the domino console. Yeah. COVID, COVID was no fun. Temporal trajectory shifter. Yeah, I've got that on. That's from the Narendra. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's on. I, I did that instead of the Gamma console. Is multi-boxing allowed? Um, multi-boxing is allowed so long as you are manually controlling all of the clients. Um, but for, for me, you know, I, I, would, I wouldn't know. I, I don't ever violate the STO terms of service, but... Um, so long as you're not doing things that are blatant, if you're automating it, they, they're not going to know. There's there's tons of like gold sellers right now that are just spamming Admiralty on dozens of accounts and Cryptic just doesn't seem to, to care at all. I think you can get away with quite a lot this game. Um... I, you know, it depends on the queue. If I'm doing like an infected, um, I'll probably hit a bunch of consoles at the start and then start using uncon once they're, they're done. The DPRM. I like DPRM. Okay. Don't, don't get me wrong. I like the DPRM console. It's a really good console. It's one of the best in the game. But I, I think people, people see that it is a really good console and just absolutely go nuts for it. And I like it. I just don't think that every last build in the game needs it. Uh, Yogo, I think you'd be fine. I think you'd be fine so long as you're not doing... Like any mini games, especially, you should be fine. So long as you manually control everything, you're fine. I have had on stream before, like three accounts open at the same time and never ran into an issue. M6 is a good option. That's a good call. The M6 is also a fairly accessible console here. So the issue with the M6 is it's 15 second uptime with a two minute cooldown. 
that's the the issue with it. Oh, uh, I'm just I'm thinking of what I want to do here. I got a couple different options, and I think for this build, I'm gonna go ultimate, just for the crit chance. With the ultimate console on the bow and arrow, uh, when I beam up to space here in a little bit, my crit chance and severity numbers are gonna be very good. Okay, so bridge officers got to be fixed because right now they are very, uh, very much not what I want them to be. So let me change this to Intel. I'm going to do OSS3 if I, I don't have it on here, apparently. Martin, how's it going? Whenever you're looking things up on the exchange, uh, you don't have to type in the full name. You just type in an abbreviation. Or not abbreviation, just a part of the name and you'll be fine. So OSS3 on this guy. Yeah, but when you get up to a high crit chance level, like with this character, I should be up near like 100% crit, or not quite 100%, but pretty damn close. Um, once you get up to a really high number, basically any crit that you have is basically cat 2. Nice, Martin. Yeah, the, the Thry is a very interesting design. Beam Overload 3, I'm going to have the Cannon Scatter Volley on here for preferential targeting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run another Intel ability. Uh, remember that a bunch of these Intel abilities count as Uncon procs and all that now, so I don't remember what all does. I mean, Evade Target Lock is a control. Yeah, I don't remember if that counts as an Uncon, but... Uh, evade target lock has a low, oh, it's got a minute recharge. I'm going to do recursive shearing three on the commander engineer. Recursive shearing works really well with beam overload. Uh, basically if you mark this on a target, it is going to take any damage you do to that target each second and give you an additional 30%. Viral impulse bursters? I didn't remember which of these was, but good call. Uh, that's got a lower cooldown for sure. Um, having some brain farts here today. So Temporal is also really nice for its low cooldown on con procs, so... Let's see here. I don't have any of the good ones trained. No chronometrics. Have a cooldown. Yeah, the issue with EMP is I don't have room for it on this. Kinetic Magnet is also counted as an uncon now, I believe, too, because it technically has a control aspect. I might be misremembering. I don't even remember. It's been months since I've done any of this. I have a picture on the builds Discord, and I've already forgotten. Chronometric, I know. Heisenberg, that's the low cooldown one. Okay. Yeah. You, attack pattern beta is probably the best attack pattern you can put on your build. Um, I see a lot of people use Delta 
or Omega. Omega gives you a damage boost, uh, which is cool. And Delta debuffs things that shoot at you. But Attack Pattern Beta will debuff anything you hit with your weapons. And it's a debuff that is going to stay on them for uh, at least 10 seconds. And it's going to refresh every time you hit that target. And it will stack with other players running Beta. So Beta giving that damage resistance debuff is going to be more impactful for, than Omega or Delta. So Heisenberg. Is something I already had trained on here. Okay. It's going to be that type of day for me. Where's it on this list? Yeah, I just had to click off that and back to keep. Now you have a few different options with the the science abilities. Uh, you can run, you know, like a grav well for control, which is generally what I'm going to recommend, just because grav wells make a lot of things much easier. Um, but you could also do more on controx. Like, I could spam. In fact, I should probably just do that just to demonstrate. I I can just put a bunch of unconventional systems procs on this build and would have no issues with console cooldowns but for reliability sake i'm going to put a photonic officer one on and then the grav well and now for cooldown reduction this is a little bit light and there's a few ways i could go about fixing this photonic officer on its own is not going to be enough i can run the boimler effect uh personal trait which does well, but it's not completely reliable. If you're looking for maximum reliability, you would run the Photonic Officer 1 and then a, an Ox to Bat 1 with three Technician Doffs. That is ultimate reliability. You don't ever have to worry about uh, cooldown reduction if you do that. But... Not everyone likes Ox to Bat. Ox to Bat does have some downsides. You're going to be draining your Ox power. You're going to be required to run three technician duty officers. Uh, it does limit what you can do. So I am going to take a little bit of a gamble with this build and just do the photonic officer with the Boimler trait. Reform account member. Terrible. Yeah, Boimler's still really expensive. Uh, Delta Prime's expensive. Everything's expensive. It's a very expensive game. Okay, so I think uh, these bridge officers are, are fine. Um, I like the Gravwell, just having that on there. It, it's probably not going to do too much. But even just having a little bit of control on the map for that 20 seconds is really handy. Like if you go into a random queue and you have a bunch of small enemies just running around, if you can group them up with a grab well, that's going to just make your life easier and your teammates' lives easier. So it doesn't hurt to run a grab well. There's better options if you're being a bit more you know, greedy with how you're setting up the ship to, you know, you could do more on con procs. Uh, just really depends how you want to approach that, that control and runs. Yeah. Boimler and photonic officer, I, I think is good enough, but it is, there is still a little bit of a gamble to it. Yeah. The gravel doffs are nice. So I need to fix up my traits now. So it's, I tried to fix up a few of these right before the stream because I had all my Torp stuff on here, but um, I need to 
take off some of these traits here. Um, so right now I have Terran Goodbye, which is really nice. Every time we get a kill, you're getting crit chance and accuracy up to 15% crit chance if you get all three stacks. Super Weapon Ingenuity, pretty much a must have for beam overload build. It gives you 100% uptime for beam overload. Um, preferential targeting, that's 100% to cat one whenever I hit cannon scatter volley. So it's pretty nice. Emergency weapon cycle, it's pretty much a staple for the last decade with emergency powered weapons. Calm before the storm and then universal designs. Uh, let me take a drink here and then I'll respond to chat. Um, do I have a different setup when it comes to pug runs versus regular runs? Uh, generally the, the best approach to STO is just to, to kill everything before it can kill you. And if I'm pugging, like, uh, I don't usually pug. I don't, don't like carrying random teams. It's, it's not something I like to do, but. I would go in with like a, a cannon scatter volley build and I would take in the same build that I would take in on a record run for that. Just things die so fast. Yeah. There's no kill like overkill. Blindness. How you doing? Uh, isn't Boimler and calm before the storm enough. So calm is cool. Calm is one of the best traits in the game for energy weapons. I would say, uh, but it's only up half the time. So it's only good in long duration content or things that are at least 40 seconds in length. There are column is good, but there are some limitations. Here's this. And um, so I'm getting messages about a potential table wipe. Um, they fixed the issues with the bridge officers before the bridge officers were doing too much. Uh, then they, as many of you know, a couple weeks back, they broke them. Uh, so they did nothing, but now they're fixed and working as intended. So um, probably going to do a table wipe. I'll do an announcement about that next week, most likely. <clears throat> Yeah, the, the Styx is an amazing ship, very versatile. Uh, so I need to remove one of these traits for, um, for to get the Vanguard Specialist trait on here to extend the, du the duration of my recursive shearing. Uh, so one of these traits that I have on here is going to have to be cut. And it's probably going to be Terran Goodbye. Terran Goodbye is really good. But Terran Goodbye requires you to get kills. Uh, and if you're not the one landing the kill shot, you're screwed. So uh, for, for this case, I'm going to drop it, though. I'm debating between that and Calm Before the Storm. Like, both of them are really good traits, but I just want to get something on here or take something off so I can get Vanguard Specialist on. Yeah, it's, it's Calm or Terran. I mean, nah, I, I think between Calm and Terran, goodbye, it's it's really close. They're both such good traits. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do, Osiris. Uh, best way to farm the lithium, Admiralty. How all the gold sellers doing it right now? They just have large bot infrastructure set up with Admiralty. Run that 24 seven. Why cryptics trying to nerf some of the key binds, but it doesn't matter because at this point they pretty much have their automation software set up for screen recognition. 
matter if Cryptic removes the keybind, so they can just manually hit the button. Okay, I gotta fix these personal space traits now, because I still have some Torp stuff on. I'm gonna do beam training, adaptive offensive. Uh, I'll go through the full list of what I have on here in a moment. Gotta have Uncon on, don't I? That'd help. Let's take off beam training. Captain Wallace, how you doing? Thanks, Yad. Um, feeling a bit better. Still a little bit of a cough. The throat's still a little bit funky, but definitely a lot better than last week. More DPS when you're not exploding. Yeah. Okay, so traits wise, a good day to die. I'm on a tactical character, pretty much a staple trait if you're on attack. Anchored. Uh, if you're sitting still, which with a dual beam bank setup, you're probably going to be sitting still at points. You'll get a damage boost in exchange, you lose resistance. But most things are going to die before they can kill you. Um, intelligence agent attache. Very good to have. Kathy, thank you for the five. Uh, fragment of an a fragment of AI tech. Gives you some cat one for energy weapons that scales with your control X. Um, unconventional systems, obviously, for the cooldown reduction. Symbiotic Ice. This actually adds a pretty nice amount of damage on builds. This is a trait you can get on the exchange. Still fairly cheap, I believe. Okay, it's not as cheap as it had been. Okay, that's, that's unfortunate, but you can get it on the exchange. Uh, just gives you some extra damage based on how much you do with your beams. So for beam builds, it's a pretty good trait. Uh, then I've got behind that that I can't click because it's behind the, the traits bar here. Self-modulating fire, really good uh, to get that shield pen. Um, Terran targeting systems for the crit severity. Fleet coordinator gives you a st scaling boost to scales with how many people you have in the map with you. Adaptive offensive. This can give you up to 9% crit severity and then the Boimler effect for cooldown reduction. Um, did they fix the bug? I don't know. I don't know, Cyrus. The, with the bridge officers, the, the, all the bugs with the bridge officers have been fixed. Yeah. Uh, symbiotic guys, I don't know, but I've had fairly good performance out of it every time I've tried recently. Yeah. Um, I've had this issue with the, the personal traits being like this since Stormfall. They just haven't fixed it. Space rep wise, advanced targeting systems for the 20% crit severity. Magnified firepower for the cat 2 damage boost. Precision for the 5% crit chance. Enhanced shield pen could be traded off for something else if you wanted more survivability, maybe energy refrequencer. And then Tyler's duality for the crit chance. Oh, no, no, no. This is this is a different thing. Uh, this is a trait, symbiotic ice. You're thinking of parasitic ice, which is a console. Symbiotic ice is a uh, personal space trait. You're thinking of Parasitic Ice, the console that you'd hit it, and then the TAC cube would just shoot down on the map, which sucked. It really sucked. Um, for my specializations, I'm going Intel Primary. Uh, for the Secondary, Strategist or Temporal will work. I'm going to go Temporal. Stargate has gone. Yeah, 
it'll be added to the infinity uh block box here hopefully in the the very near future so i need to fix my dos now and then i'm gonna head up to space so i'm gonna drop these torpedo guys that i have uh i need to grab my crit severity and crit chance duty officers here Yeah, it was very annoying. Parasitic Ice was uh, a pain to deal with. Now, for survivability, I could run um, the shield distribution officer called Agent Ale. On the Fed side, it's Agent Nerul. This is from the Delta expansion pack, and what this guy does is every time you... Well, while you have attack pattern beta up... Every outgoing shot from you is going to heal you. So it's actually a fairly solid duty officer, but it's locked and limited to the Delta Operations Pack. But it's a pretty good DOF, and I'm going to run it for the survivability aspect. Intriguing. How's it going? Box sound? Not much. Just uh, working on this uh, beam overload build. Okay, gonna, because I have the Borg Doffs, I am going to utilize them. So I am going to run here. I have a 27 on right now and a 23. Um, do I have a bound 26? Yes, I do. I'm gonna run a 26 and a 27. Um, So that should be nice. I, and I think with symbiotic ice, that is a dot, right? So I don't know if 26 actually boosts the, the damage it does, but 26 is a good doff for these builds that have temporal. Uh, 27 just universally is just really, really good. Uh, the Delta expansion pack is $100 during sales. Should be about $150 right now, but during the sales, it's, it'll be $100. Uh, $42 would be fine. Um, in fact, yeah, that's that's a good call right there. Um, $42 is the, the best off in the game, right? I, I definitely do not have a, a substantial amount of those... Sitting in a in a bank, you know. Drawing a character. Okay. One thing about these ships is you you set things up on ground and sometimes they will uh reset. It looks like everything is still here. Everything is how it should be. That's good. Every one of those on the exchange, I will tell you right now is mine. I have them staggered price-wise to make it look like there's competition on the market. But all four of them, if there's four of them up there, they're all mine. I'll prove it real quick. Every last one of those, mine. I uh, collected all of the 42s that I had uh, on my account. And sent them over to one character, and I, I had like 16 or 17 of them. But I thought I had more. I must have sold some. Should I rub my hands together in a circle? Terrible.
Unbound Delphic Omni maxed out. I mean, if you can get like three, four hundred mil for it, then sell it. But if it's under like a like under two hundred mil, I'd probably just keep it. Okay, need to move the mic over because it's blocking that part of my screen. I need to set this tray up. Uh, before I do that, let's take a look at my stats. So just here in space, I'm at 45% crit chance, 225% severity. And that's before any of the traits kick in, which are going to provide me with, you know, substantial boost. Yes. All safe. How's it going? Okay. So as I mentioned in the beam overload video, the, or the best beam overload ships, the reason that I like this ship is the, the recursive shearing, override subsystem safety is three. I can do emergency power to weapons three. I've got a battle cloak. I've got the uh, weapon system efficiency command aura. Uh, just as a fairly strong platform for beam overload. So now's the fun part where I get my tray set up. Uh, just a reminder, when you get a ship, uh, your power levels are balanced. If you want a direct and immediate increase to your damage output, hit this button here to go to the attack preset. It's the, the leftmost button on your power window. That will jack your weapon power up to 100 and will substantially boost your damage output. So if you're brand new to the game, you're welcome, because that is a huge boost, especially for a new account. Nick, how's it going, buddy? Yes, this ship, I do want to say, uh, my friend Nick there, graciously donated this ship to me he he knew that i had been wanting it for a while and he just he wanted to to see me do a full beam overload build he's a really big beam overload fan terrible nick So I talked about this in the video yesterday, but uh, preferential targeting is a very popular trait with beam overload. It comes off the NX. People quite often think that you have to uh, actually use cannons to get the boost from it. And while I do have cannons on here to, to get the boost for your beam overload, all you have to do is hit cannon scatter volley while preferential targeting is on your build. You don't have to have a cannon on. I do because of the specific way I have the ship set up, but you don't have to. You just put scatter volley on your spam bar and you get the large damage boost for your beam overload. Like that's fairly common with the uh, the NX is people buy it for the trait and don't necessarily fly it a ton. It's not a bad ship. It's just uh, it's not the ship most people. Want. I'm just fixing up my trays quick and then I'll go in and level the ship up. Demonstrate its firepower potential. Yeah, um, Symbiotic Ice has generally performed quite well for me in the times that I've used it.
Okay. Let me, however you set your tray up, you know, set it up however it works for you. I just quickly set this up. It'll work with my keybinds. That's all personal preference as to how you set that up. It's just for beams. Symbiotic Ice is only a beam boost. I'm going to start the parser up and then uh, just take this through in our gala and we'll take a look at how it does. Patrol Elite Argala. Thank you. Yeah, I'd probably do okay on a tank also. I have my game sound turned off. Let me turn the game sound on quick. As it's on. Days of Doom. Popping all the time, driving you insane. Yeah. Jordan, looks like our fight got them to notice us. Let's go over and ask if they're tall. Might come out of hiding. Keep concentrating fire on individual ships. Separate them. Whittle down their numbers. We will not go quietly. Piloting is rough. I can tell I haven't been playing the game much recently. I mean, it wasn't the fastest Argala ever, but, like, I mean, it felt like it was packing quite a bit of a punch, but I can tell you right now, um, one of the big issues I'm having with this, that's with how I have my tray set up right now, I have my fire all command on my F key, which is basically what I'm using as a spam bar right now. And by doing that, I am causing my weapons to fire too much, basically. And it's actually causing them to fire less than they should be 
And this is a common issue. A lot of people do this and it, it screws them over. Um, so I'm gonna move some of these abilities around different trays. But basically, if you have your fire all weapons command on your spam bar, and then you spam that spam bar, you know, as much as most people do, your weapons, like they basically like jam up and it's not them actually jamming up on your ship. It's more the communication to the server. Uh, you know, it starts to have issues. So that's something I'll probably talk about in a future video, but that was something that I was noticing right there. But yeah, that was, that was our Gala elite. Um, I don't know how much of an issue most people have with our Gala elite, but I, I don't know if that combat time was fast or not for people. I mean, yeah, elite isn't elite content in STL isn't hard. That's nothing new, but it wasn't the fastest of runs, but hopefully a, a good demonstration. Now let's check some of those damage numbers. So the dual heavy cannon did not do well. That's a sign of me piloting poorly. Um, so if I slap another dual beam bank on here, that'll be an immediate DPS increase. Where's the, the turret at? Rough. Let's, uh, let's put another Omni on and, uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna go to the the kinetic cutting beam combo that I talked about earlier instead of this turret because this turret's not quite doing well. Uh, days of doom, gravity kills. I'm tired of doing gateway to Grethor. Gateway to Grethor, painful. The amount of times I've done that over the years, I don't. I just don't like doing it. Yeah, the, the assimilated two piece. I have it on SOB, but I didn't have it on this character, so that's why I'm going through the fun process of upgrading right now. Reroll that epic mod. Yeah, but the, the uh, Universal Endeavors, that's already on like a fixed list. So I doubt they'll go through and change that. I also need to grab another dual beam bank. I'm too lazy to swap characters, so I'll wail out and just craft one. I uh, won't be stupid. That'd, that'd be stupid. I'll uh, I'll go and grab one. So the the Terran dual heavy cannon did not work out there, um, and that's just down to my piloting being garbage right now. Do I have another phaser? Right in my inventory. Perfect. Yeah, I'll blame the, the COVID. Blame COVID for everything. Do I have the assimilated module on this character? Because I'll do that instead of... I don't have the assimilated module on this character. Yeah, the, the Terran... The issue with that too was I didn't have the phaser version on this character. So I'll just do another dual beam bank. And I'll be fine. I need the assimilated module... Yeah, this character has a lot of things, but at the same time, it's it's got a few things. It's...
still in use today, yeah. Not to wait two minutes for that to go through. Terrible. Terrible all safe. Yeah, working on new characters can be very demotivating sometimes because you start to get into the cost of, oh, I need to grab, oh, like a DPRM for this character. I need to, to grab X and Y, and it's just, it can be a bit rough. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Alan, this is a ROM alien. Proper alien, so I get that extra trait slot. Terrible. Uh, what is better? Um, Rom Alien's best, but between Romulan and Reman, probably Romulan for most people. Yeah, getting everything unlocked to count wide could be a pain. Takes time. Very expensive. Technically, if you're doing a weapon space build and you don't care about cloaking, technically, a Jemadar Vanguard can beat out a Romulan, but they're so expensive to set up. You have it's it's a hard requirement that you have the uh, Gamma expansion pack, and if you don't have that, don't even consider it. Yeah, the the Adalith not being an account unlock. Yet, does definitely limit um, the beam overloads, like doing beam overload on a ton of characters. So uh, this is going to be an uh, adventure of how many buttons will Spencer forget to, to press? Oh, the, the big Gamma pack, the $150 one. Um, like the, the proper Gamma Vanguard pack, because you have to have the Vanguard bridge officers from that. Not the, not the DOF, the, the, the bridge officers. But uh, that's only if you're doing a weapons-based build and you absolutely do not care about Cloak. The minute you care about Cloak, it shifts back to, to Romulan Alien being the best. Okay, my cooldowns are good. I'm going to take this into a pug. You know what? Let, let's... let me think. I really like Kier. You guys like Kier too, right? Y'all like Kier. Ground. Kier found advanced. I'm going to queue up for it if you want to hop in. Uh, I mean, it could insta pop. And... But if you want to hop in, Kier found advanced. Really fun queue. Yeah, the Vern. The Vern is at least in the, the Stealing Time bundle. That's the only one that I've ever bought is the Stealing Time. And I never, I haven't used any of the ships since. Ground build stream when? I don't know. I My ground game is the, the exchange at this point.
I just, I, I have a character set up with a split beam. Split beam rifle for most of the, the damage types and that, that does most of what I need. Okay, let's let's see how long it takes for like a cube to, to go down. Oh, that wasn't even me. That's other people in here. I got to do a lot of things. I pretty much did nothing. I pretty much did nothing in that entire match, but good game. <laughs> the, the D7 is really small. Thank you all for, for the carry. Up it. I can hit the right chat. GG. Yeah, the D7 is extremely small. It's an extremely small ship. If I go up to, to space here, maybe I can get a size comparison. I scored third. Look at that. Massive DPS right there. Yeah, but th this is a really small ship. Like, here's a... Like, it's it's it is a cruiser. But it's the size of like the the Andorian pilot, you know the. That's bigger. The Andorian ship is bigger than this. Like look at that. That's an escort. This is a a D seven. I mean I, I, this to this even looks bigger. It's a very small ship. Now there's all these bigger ships around. Okay, let's do a, uh, I'll set this. So let's take this up to, to elite and do like, uh, an elite Kittimer. Yes, you still have to do combat log one uh, for the real time parser. But the thing with the combat log, you don't have to do combat log zero after each engagement. You just type combat log one when you start your game up and it's persistently active until you close your game. So you, you don't have to do combat one and zero. Just do combat log one when you start your game, if you're parsing and leave it on. The, the parser automatically separates things. Tom, how's it going? Uh, so if you want to join Kittimer Vortex Elite, um, just, you know, if, if you're joining this, let's uh, make sure the the probes, we, we can even do this on advanced. I'll, I'll join the queue on Elite and advanced, and whatever pops first, we'll go through. Oh, 
Oh, Kittimer advanced popped. So let's go into that and just see how this goes. Um, if I had my choice, would I pick the D7 or Kirk's Enterprise? You mean the Miracle Worker? I, I would take this D7. I've got the, the Miracle Worker at Donnie and I don't there are two active I don't like it as much as a lot of people do. It's it's not a bad ship, it's just I generally just don't care about miracle worker ships. I think they're the only thing good from the miracle worker ships is that extra console. Um the Miracle Worker D7 is futile. Okay, that's really loud. Let's turn that down like 20 decibels. Um, the Miracle Worker D7 has ruin. This D7 Temporal has um, a much worse trait. STO, very hard content. Yes, having endeavors. Well, I don't have endeavors maxed out. I have the space ones pretty much maxed out. Where did Notcher go? Let's see how's it going. The scimitar has been destroyed, but um, a good game to everyone that got in there and helped. Um, my endeavors. I am at endeavor rank three hundred and seventy-eight. So, I not. Everything is done, but realistically, I, I every time I got a space thing, I hit the space thing. So all that I have left in space is basically resistance crap. Yeah, endeavors. The difference between a an, an old account with endeavors and a brand new player, it's brutal. Uh, do I have a video on how to do the Pavo event? My recommendation, uh, so this is the, the one where there's the Pavo ground, right? Um, all you have to do is clear the first group, basically, where you where you just put down the, the crystals at the start. You can go in, start it solo, do that little bit at the start, and then AFK. I, I did not do a public event queue uh, for pretty much the last half year. I always do them as a private and then I just AFK them. So I'm the only person in the map 
I'm not impacting other players and I get my rewards. So I just AFK them. Yeah, the fact that there's no way to buy the Endeavor points is crazy. But like these these events that they run, I don't I don't enjoy the Pavo. You know, I don't some of these queues, like I've done them so many times, I don't wanna sit here and do them a ton more, you know. And to start up a private on PC, all you have to do is open your TFO window, go to the private tab, find the queue you're trying to start, and just hit the start. Uh, STO combat meter, yes. Yeah, Terry, it's it's the real-time parser from SCM. Uh, so in SCM... You basically hit this real-time parser button at the top. Uh, when you first open it, it's going to be a window like this that you can resize. Um, I have it specifically set up on my overlay, so let me turn it off. But you can move it around to resize it however you want. And then you just double-click back into it, and it goes and stays where you want it. Then I just have the... I have that window captured by OBS specifically, so I don't have to do display capture. It's always had that overlay. Um, SCM is has not had any development now in a few years. So in that match there, let's take a look at how the weapons performed. Yeah, going with the uh, just all dual beam banks at the front definitely was better. Recursive shearing did really well there. My piloting was garbage to be to be blunt about it, but it did I have beam overload misfire a ton or was I not hitting my space bar enough? Stu, how's it going? Really confused about those numbers. Either so either my beam overload was misfiring. Or I was not spamming my space bar enough there, so my beam overload had uh, nowhere near the amount of hits that it should have had. You're gonna you're gonna sell keys. Terrible, Martin. It's all about that gambling life, you know. Bill Monk, thanks for stopping by. Hope you uh, feel better. I probably I gotta readjust my spam bars if uh, if I'm not hitting stuff enough. I'll just put everything back on my F key. I have all my keybinds set up for Torp stuff right now, so. My uh, fire weapons command being on my F key, which is basically the key that I use as a spam bar. Uh, for Torps is not an issue because I specifically had it set to only fire energy weapons on that key bind. But the issue is with all these abilities on there, when I spam it a ton, it's causing the weapons to basically jam up. Oh, Stu loves beam overload. He was he was telling me he's been uh, he's been looking forward to me uh, talking about it. He's a big fan. Uh, Stu, how is the beam overload puller on tank coming along? What's my thoughts on STO keybinds? I like it. Some of the uh, the keybinds that I had found a while back are. Um. Like they added them to that, so. Like, it, it's a program that I actively use quite a bit, so. Like, my current key bind here, I can change this right now. 
me add fire energy weapons to the bind. Then on my F key, I will remove that. Create bind file. There we go. My weapons are no longer set to, to bind there to fire, so that's Steam Overload was not always popular, that is for sure. But when I first started playing the game, Beam Overload was basically it buffed up one shot, right? So it buffed up a single shot, and that shot hit really hard. In fact, let me see if I can find that here. Let me go to my channel. Capture back on. So yeah, some of these, like seven years ago, I've got a video from me going into uh, some pug PVP queues and trying out the the new beam overload at the time, and like the beam overload kept getting changed. So I don't even remember what this version was. I don't know. P PVP was always really fun with beam overload, though. Look at these icons, too. The game was very different back then, that's for sure. Yeah, Ralston knows. Ralston was in some of these videos. He, he knows. It was a very fun time. Yeah, there are um, mods out there that you can get to, to bring back some of the old icons. Okay, I'm going to do a solo um, ISA just to see how this holds up. Yeah, pretty much. You see, the, the excuse I always use, you know, I'd have people get mad at me when I would do, like, pug cues back in the day, and they'll, they'd be like, oh, you're just ruining the queue for the rest of us and i just respond uh excuse me i'm role playing i'm role playing as q over here when i look at a when i shift my camera to that part of the map i'm snapping my finger and things are dead just rping like everyone else Yeah, I remember doing the prototype uh, console crafting. That was rough. The situation is grim. All it's a little bit blurry, isn't it? That'd be why. Broken soul, how's it going, man? Your defensive capabilities are unable to withstand us. Lower your shields and await assimilation. I haven't really flown in a while, so nobody expect anything. Like, it, it, the thing with Beam Overload is it does a lot of damage, but it's doing that damage to a single target, so... Let's see, can I kill this? Oh, I'm gonna die.
I can't kill it without taking the gens down. That's sad. Ripperoni. You see, this is the difference though between beam overload, cannon scatter volley is. With cannon scatter volley, I'm doing this amount of damage to every single one of these targets in my forward arc. With the beam overload, it's just one target at a time. rough today more crit I know Yeah, Fire at Will has a higher DPS potential than Beam Overload. It's not the right one. No. You know what that pain is, Alan? Hitting one target at a time instead of using cannon scatter volley and doing this amount of damage to every single target. This, this is a bit of a rough match, isn't it, though? This is really quite poor on my part. Um, crit D damages the epic mod and then damage times four. It's squishy spends time, yeah. This, this just is generally why you don't see me in beam overload builds is because they do a lot of damage but compared to something like cannon scatter volley they like, suck yeah it's just getting there's no survivability for this. I'm getting spawn camped by this tack cube now. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to need some repairs after this. Yeah. 
Yeah, this ship is falling apart currently. As soon as an enemy looks at it, it's dead. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, that was rough. That is twice the time. This is an infected advanced, okay? That is twice the amount of time it took for a torp boat to basically solo the elite version of this map. Like, uh, that's why I haven't really covered Beam Overload for so long is because it, it can do really well. You know? Um, this is a really glass cannon type setup as such very blatantly shows. But compared to the other builds out there, you know, Cannon Scatter Volley, Exotic Particle Generators, uh, Torp Boats, they make this look like garbage. And this is about as good as Beam Overload gets damage-wise with a ship like this. Now, I'm not flying it the best right now. I haven't flown really in probably a couple weeks or months at this point. But Beam Overload compared to the other options just is lackluster. Yeah, I still rate SS3. Set up a scatter and see how I do. Okay, I'll take in my... Uh, someone was asking... I don't remember who it was, but someone was asking, what is my daily driver? Well, it's a Gemidar bug ship. Give me just a sec, though. One minute. I was acting up a bit there on to, to mute and pretty sure none of you want to see that. Uh, what the hell happened to this console layout? Just threw the PC out the window. Yeah, I'm, I'll tell you how I really feel. I mean, I hate beam overload. I knew that going into this, but everyone wants beam overload because it looks the most canon. It, it's the most fun because you're single target, blah, 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 but it sucks. That's my honest thoughts. Beam overload sucks, but it's what everyone wants to do. Okay. What the hell happened to you? Go Gamma Ordinance. Agony Redistributor is not going to do as much with a Cannon Scatter Volley build. Ah, screw it. Let's just go on like this. Polaron build. What up? Okay, so much for the ox to bat setup. Like all the the loadouts just completely screwed. Just gonna slot another Borg off for right call the day. Let's go, security officer. That'll work. They have a loadout. I know this. The, the bridge officer setup's not right. Whatever, I'm gonna I'm just gonna live with it. Yeah, fire at will was meta and technically fire at will still beats beam overload. It's just you have to do a lot more for it. It's it's nowhere near as it's not as simple as the uh like anything else. Beam, or fire at will has intentionally been made to be super complicated to actually use. Is the Oberth any good for Scion Con the EPG? I don't know. I, I haven't looked at it.
I mean, I'm not flying this great, to be fair at all. But this is a themed build. Okay. This this isn't like Super Min Max, Fodwar Juggernaut. This is a themed Polaron build. This is a themed polar on build that has a much easier time getting through content because it's Canon Scatter Volley and Canon Scatter Volley can blitz through whatever you're going through. Uh, whereas Beam Overload, you're one target at a time. You're it's a much simpler flying style, but it's also much. You, it's you're limited in your capability also because you've limited uh, yourself to one target at a time. So to answer the question, I saw a few things pop up. Let me get these. Let me go display cap. So where? How is fall complicated? Okay, if you want to have max uptime on fire at will, you have to use something like ETM. Or the, the recluse trait would work also technically, but that's much more expensive for people. Redirecting arrays is cool, but it doesn't give you full uptime. So if you want 100% uptime on ETM, or on fire at will, you have to use ETM, Entwine Tactical Matrices. That's the trade off the Gagarin. Um, and you have to time a torp spread in the downtime between your fire at will. So as soon as fire at will goes down, you hit a torp spread. So it, it requires manual timing and triggering of your abilities, which most people can't handle. You know, I, I tell people, take this off your spam bar and most people don't like that they want to just be able to spam bar everything uh the moment you tell most sto players that they need to manually time something uh they're gonna say that's a hard pass buddy in my experience so it is it's just that fa to get that high uptime on it requires that manual timing that most people don't want to do. Rebecca has a gun. Yeah, it's it's the uptime. You don't want to play STO, you want to test how many uh, keystrokes your spacebar can handle. I like that. Grim, that's great. Yeah, ETM sucks to use. It really does. Oh no, but the, the point is with the beam overload versus scatter volley. I know everyone or pretty not everyone, but most people in the game much prefer cannon scatter volley. I get that. Or or not. Prefer beam overload and hate cannon scatter volley. Um, but you look at your video. So like MB's got videos up on his YouTube channel, and I, I pointed uh, towards his videos quite a bit. But like, you get your piloting down with cannon scatter volley, and you use a, a better. A uh, better ship than what I was using there with the the, the Gemadar bug ship. Like everything just dies if you position right. Like he's he's doing a full solo infected space advanced in fifty nine seconds here, and like cannon scatter volley just annihilates these enemies. Like. You look at something like this and you look at how far in he's he's on the right side. You know, we're 30 seconds in and the right side's about to die. 
or not. Apparently that transformer took a while for him, but you get the point. Like you're not doing this with a, uh, a beam overload build. Beam overload does a lot of damage to a single target, but in most situations in STO, you're not going against a single target. You're going against a large group of enemies. I don't know. You get, you get the point of what I'm trying to say there. Yeah, and if the game was more responsive, that's true. STO is notorious for having server issues. Um, Many, like, for the higher-end DPS runs, you straight up can't even do those quite a bit or like most days of the week because the server performance was just too bad. Turtle. Accurate. I know I, I'm being negative towards beam overload. I just, I'm, it hits hard. It goes, it does really great numbers number wise there. Like, if I go back and look at this Kittimer, max one hit, 300k. You know, 460k. Like, it hits hard. And if you follow a build like I posted with that legendary D7, like, it does really well. It's just, on your own, you need to have more survivability than what I had. Yeah, exactly, isn't it? Can it be done in under 30 solo ISA? Probably not. Um, Agony Redistributor won't help with the CSV ISA runs because it's too fast. Things die too fast. Yeah, the Hurricane are a good example, yeah. Uh, Baul Lobby set plus... The Bowel DHCs, that'd probably work quite well. I've not tried it, but it'd probably do really good. Well, I tried it, is the thing there, Warp Core. Um, it was in the Kittimer. It was the Kittimer or Infected I did. One of them, I tried to use the Agony console, and everything had died, basically. Before I get anything out of it. Stu, unfriended. You know how I feel. We, we've had these conversations. It just depends on the target you hit it on. But that's the big thing with Agony. I've seen people get it. They expect to hit a high number with... Uh, or get a high number from Agony. And then they get nothing. It, because it, it depends on what you hit it on. So if you hit it on a target that dies in a second, you got nothing out of it. You hit it on a target that uh, is being healed still like a transformer, you might not get anything out of it. Yeah, best defense is more offense. That's always true. And yeah, CSV, if you can figure out how to fly it, it's the most efficient way to play the game. But anyhow, I am going to start to wrap things up. Um, this is going to go up as a VOD. So if people want to follow the build along and see how it did, it, it hit really hard, but it had no survivability at all. It, it was... It, it just straight up, like, the, the enemy looked at it, it died. So in team play, that's fine. In most solo content, that's fine. Uh, but if you're trying to solo cues with it, then maybe, you know, look at putting Exodus on it or something. You need the build the Borg was running? Terrible. But I am going to start to wrap things up because my throat's uh, getting a bit dry and I'm a, I'm a bit tired. So if there's any final questions people have, you know, feel free to drop them in. Yeah, and I, I know I was a bit negative towards it at the end, but 
hopefully there was some good information in here for people to uh figure out you know or get some ideas on how to improve their beam overload build because like while while i didn't in the end you know while i don't personally enjoy beam overload um i i think that that there are good uses for it like i'll probably use this as my hive build when I'm going in as a uh, side DPS or in Hive. Yeah, Ice Knight, thanks for stopping by. Terrible, Austin. Okay, thanks to everyone that stopped by. Um, thank you to all the channel members. I think the only person I'm missing on this list is the Kithia. So I'll get you added in on here when I uh, update after the stream. Um, thank you to everyone that stopped by. I'm, you know, hopefully the build was was helpful for some of you. Hopefully it was a a fun uh, ride to to just see how it performed and how wonderful it was in that solo isa let's just uh forget that uh isa ever happened let's just forget it so oh, thanks for stopping by see you guys next time exactly ice knight what isa there's well i did a solo with the uh the cannon scatter volley build yeah let's go that was the only one on the stream Ralston, stop it.